Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, we're going to make this hippo. I'm going to zoom out. She's got a pretty little dress on and she's got a little Sunday hat on with a ribbon. So we're going to make this cute little hippo today. Not in these colors, I've chosen different colors, but you can choose whatever colors you want. And uh, let's just jump right into this. So the colors I'm choosing for this guy is going to be this gray. So this is, uh, i got to turn my light down a little bit. So this is like a sparkly, I can't see the sparkles, red heart sparkly gray stuff. And this yellow that I'm using is called Saffron and it is a Craft Smart value, I'm pretty sure. So those are the colors that I'm choosing to do. So we're going to be building everything together. Everything is crocheted together. So nothing is getting sewn on for this guy. So we're going to start with the arms. This is what the arms going to look like. The reason this is here is because this, the dress obviously is going to be yellow. Then we're going to go to the legs. We're going to start the legs with shoe colors. So I chose again yellow. So you're going to need to choose whatever colors. So that's the leg. And then this is the little ear. And uh, we're going to build these parts first for the chapters. I'm going to leave you at the chapter with building your second pieces. So it'll be a short chapter one. Oh, we're doing the arm first. So, PDF users, if you if you click join, you will be able to get access to free PDFs for everything that I do. So PDF users, um, we're starting with the arm. So I just need you to start with whatever color your hippo is going to be. I'm using a five millimeter H hook because both of these call for a 5.5. So because I'm going to build in hammer Gurumi, I'm going to go down in hook size a little bit. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So we're, we don't slip stitch and we don't chain in amigurumi. So just pop over to your next stitch. Put your first stitch in that space. And you're going to use a, a stitch marker if you have one. Or a bobby pin or a barrette or whatever you have to use. And then go back into that same stitch and put your second one in there. So it's going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So you'll have 12 stitches when you're done. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So that's my one single crochet with my marker. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. You're going to repeat that all the way around. And at the end you should have 18 stitches. You should have 18 stitches. For the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So this is what you should have after your three rows. So we're going to decrease. We're going to do three single crochet decrease. Now do this around as many times as you can, which should be three. And then you'll have three extra stitches 
doing what this leaves me with 15 stitches so that's why I did it so three single crochet decrease that's my three single crochets and I'm gonna do invisible decreases with the front loops but you don't have to if you're not comfortable you can just do regular ones so that's my three single crochet decrease three times and then you should have three stitches left over I'm just gonna put one single crochet in each of those and this gives you 15 stitches for the next 16 rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches, and then we're going to change to whatever dress color you're using. So stuff as you go, and I will see you on the other side. I'm still getting stuck on everything. I'm going to go into this last stitch to change my color. So I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to finish the stitch with my new color, which is saffron. And I like to tie my straggler just so I don't have to weave. I find weaving puts makes one end thicker than the other and I don't like that. So I leave my hook in it so that I know how far to pull the knot. And I just do a tight double knot and then I can just cut off my gray. And I cut off a little bit of my straggler because I don't need it to be that long. And that's how I do a color change. I never used to. I used to weave and everything else, but I got so tired of one side being thicker than the other that you do not do that. So we're not increasing or decreasing or doing anything of the such. We're just doing our next two rows are just going to be one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches and then you can fasten off so that's my two rows done Oops. so you can fasten off the arm so I'm not going to have you make the second one now because we're going to move on We'll get all the stuff built, then I'll put up my patterns at the end of chapter one. Before we go into chapter two, you'll be you'll see all the patterns for the arms, legs, and ears. And then you can make your second pieces then. So this tail here, it just has to be a, a short little sewing tail. It doesn't have to be anything. Like we're just sewing this to the doll mid build. So just a word of advice. Um, when you do build your second pieces make sure you're stuffing them to be the same size so that's the only thing that's that's super duper important is that they have to be the same thickness so let's do the ear next and then we'll do the leg last because um, I can't fasten off the second leg because I gotta keep building so that's why I'm doing it that way so. This little ear, I never did finish sewing it up, but we'll do that after. Um, it is, that's how small, it's small. So it's not gonna take any time at all. And then we'll get to the legs and then that'll be the end of the video. Or well, the end of the chapter, sorry. So magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around so this will bring it up to 12 stitches so again after the first stitch that's where your marker goes and then we'll do stitch number two the same space all the way around
For the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these, 12 stitches. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease, this will bring you down to 8 stitches. That's one single crochet and then your decrease. So I'm just going into the full stitch. And your last round is going to be one single crochet in each of these eight stitches. So I'm just going to count to eight instead of using my marker. You can fasten off with the sewing tail. So for these ears, I just kind of want them to kind of be like that. So I just whip stitch the ends. And then I just made tiny little I just went back two or three times to make them kind of like that, concaved a little bit like that, but not overly, overly so the bottom. But anyway, I just want to come across here and make a knot just to secure that little spot. Easy peasy. So again, the ears will be at the end of the video. And now for the foot, we start with the dress color for the foot because that becomes our shoe ultimately. All my stuff. So you're gonna start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. It's one single crochet and then your increase. It's two single crochets in the same space. So you'll have a total of 18 stitches when you're done. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's two. And then your increase of so two single crochets in the same space. And repeat.
your next round is going to be in the back loops only. So these guys. You're just going to do one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches in the back loops only. So it should leave a nice ridge around. So this is bringing it from a flat foot to a not so flat foot. That's what we're doing. We're not adding toes to this like a hippo foot because these are supposed to be shoes. So we're not doing that. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And that's the full entire stitch. No more of this back loop business. So we're going to start decreasing, but only in the front of the foot. So we need to just kind of shape it. So we're going to do a two single crochet decrease through my battery or my camera just shut up. We're going to do two single crochet decrease three times. So that's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease, I'm going to do invisible just because I'm going to be doing multiple decreases. So that's one time. That's two times. That's three times. Then you should have 12 single crochets back to your marker. So you just put one in each stitch. So your next round is going to be almost the same thing. You're going to do two single crochet decrease two times. That's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease, that's one time. And your decrease, that's two times. And then you should have 12 single crochets back to your marker. Alrighty, so this is the shape that you should have. For the next two, you should have 18 stitches too. So for the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in these 18 stitches, and then we're going to go to our hippo color. So I am on my color change, so I'm on my last stitch, so I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to finish that last stitch with my new color. And then again, I'm going to tie my straggler, which should be a little longer, with my yellow in a double knot, just so I don't have to weave. So nobody ever feels this knot. Nothing ever comes of this knot. Nobody will know this knot is there. So we're gonna do back loops again. So these guys Back loops only, one single crochet in each stitch. 
st you should still have 18 stitches. There we go. So you can put some stuffing in this. Now that we've got our shape and just make sure that the bottom stays flat. Ish. I mean you're not gonna get it to completely be flat. This is my other one. So you're not gonna get a complete flat, but just make sure that stays flat. So for the next eight rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will meet you right back here. So that's my eight rows. So you can fasten off here. Um, I'm not going to fasten off because this is actually my second leg. This is my first leg. This is my second leg. So um, when you make your second leg, I don't want you to fasten off the second leg because we have to continue to build after we tie these together. We're going to crochet around them all. So fasten off this leg that you're doing now, but don't fasten off the second leg. I'll put that in the pattern. It'll be right at the bottom of the pattern not to do it. So this is going to be the end of chapter one. Um, we're going to end it with all the patterns and all the languages um, at the end before we jump into chapter two. So I will see you in chapter two. Hi guys, welcome back to chapter two. So, um, we need to uh, sew these two legs together using our little piece here. For starters, now I used four stitches to do it. So I'm gonna use four stitches again, hopefully, uh, yeah, I didn't stuff my feet the same. I'm going to use four stitches again and hopefully um, <coughs> put a bit more stuffing in this. We can have the same numbers. It's a little better. So... That's where I stopped. So you just need to decide how you want your feet. Do you want your feet to turn out a little bit or do you want your feet to 
be straight. Uh, for me, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to use four stitches. That's three. I'm going to go back on myself and use this last stitch at the back here. That's four stitches to do my legs. So your next round, so after, so we're going to be aggressive on, uh, on this. We're going to make her pretty fat because she's a hippo. So your first round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. And I'm going to show you the spaces that I used. That's one single crochet and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. So I'm at 18 stitches and I put my my increase in this stitch which is the sew a shared space with where I sewed. This next stitch over here is also a shared space in where I sewed. So I'm going to skip that because I used this one over here and I put two single crochets in there. So I'm going to skip this next stitch because it's a shared sew space and I'm going to pop across to the next one and continue with my increase. That way you don't have this bulge po poking out when you're increasing. So I'm at 37. This is a shared sew space on this side. I didn't use the shared sew space on that side, so I'm going to use it here for my two single crochets for my increase. That's where it goes. So now I'm going to pop across. That's a shared sew space, so I'm going to ignore that because I've got my two single crochets here. And I'm going to pop across. You'll still have no gap. And that's my 40th stitch. My last increase puts me at 43 stitches. So I still don't have a gap on either side. And with skipping that one stitch, not, not sharing the shared sew space, you're not going to have this little thing poking out here because we're gonna I mean you, you might a little bit after the second row but it's not gonna be as prevalent if we didn't skip that stitch so you should have 43 stitches if you just did everything I just did by only using one shared sew space and the opposite so over here I, I did my increase in that shared sew space so I did it over here on the opposite side <coughs> should balance things out and not feel like your doll is twisted. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And at this point, you should have this will this will bring you up to 57 stitches. That's number 1. That's number 2 and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat.
So I have done my sequence and I have one stitch left which puts me at 57 stitches. So this is the little garble mess you should have. It should look all wavy and stuff like that. For the next eight rows you're just going to put one single crochet <clears throat> in each of these 57 stitches. And then this little wavy mess goes away. And I will see you on the other side. So that's what your eight rows should look like. Pretty fat. Um, we're going to decrease this next row. We're going to decrease in the back loops only because I need we're going to decrease in these back loops because I need these front loops to start making the dress in so that's where we're going to reattach to do the dress part so we're just going to be decreasing in these back loops only on this round and then we change color to our dress color so your decrease is two single crochet decrease because that was our increase, our last increase. So that's number one, two, and then your decrease in the back loops only and repeat. This brings you back down to 43 stitches. So I'm back around using my back loops only it puts this ridge of front loops exposed all the way around. So we'll get into that later. I have one stitch left because that's what we've been doing the whole time with this extra stitch. So I'm going to switch colors. So I'm going to go into that back loop and I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to finish this stitch with my saffron color. Let me find the end of it. And I'm just going to tie, just so I don't have to weave, I'm just going to tie these two in a double knot. Cut off my gray. And in this round I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these 43 stitches. So we're using the whole stitch this time. And I will see you on the other side. So we're going to keep decreasing. This next round I want you to do three single crochet decrease eight times. And then you're going to have three extra stitches just to put one single crochet in each of those. So three single crochet decrease eight times. That's number one with your marker. That's three single crochets. And then I'm going to do my front loops only for my decrease. That's invisible. So I am at the end of my sequence for three single crochet decrease. I only have three stitches left so I'm just going to put one single crochet in each of those and you should have 35 stitches. And your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 35 stitches. So you can start stuffing this a little bit. So 
So make sure you're getting down into this part of the legs really well. Oh, she is big and beautiful, so you gotta stuff her that way. So, you know, you got the idea. I'll finish filling it. After I do a few more rows, I can just pack her down. So, your next round is going to be four single crochet decrease, so do it all the way around until you can't do it anymore. You should have five stitches left, and I just want you to put one single crochet in each of the five stitches, and this will give you 30 stitches. So I am all the way around with my sequins, and I can't get another sequence in. So I'm just going to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches, just like I talked about before. And then this next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So your next round is going to be five single crochet decrease all the way around and you're going to have two stitches left. So you will have 26 stitches when you're done. That's number one. That's five single crochets. And then I'm still doing invisible decreases. I am at the end of my sequence and I have two stitches left and I'm just going to put one single crochet in each of those. This gives you 26 stitches. For the next four rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 26 stitches. And then after the four rows, that's where we're gonna sew our arms on. This is what you should have. It looks pretty funny. We're going to start stuffing it again. Start stuffing it again. Keep stuffing it. That's about what it should look like when it's done. So we're going to sew the arms on. stuffing out of the way. So I made these arms so it doesn't really matter how you sew them on. Doesn't matter which way you sew them on. I used five stitches to sew mine on. So you just kind of kind of have to figure out where the where your center is going to be and what five stitches you're going to use. Of course, you don't have to just use five stitches. I'm just telling you so that our numbers are the same. If you wanted to make sure. But, I mean, if you're an avid crocheter, you already know that, you know, numbers aren't going to stay the same if you do something different. So, you can just tuck that guy down in there. 
That's my one arm. Now the trick is, oh, I didn't lay myself very much yarn on this guy. The trick is to try to get them even. Look at, look at the stupid little tail I left myself. That's not very good. So, that's all we do for our arms. And now we just crochet around those like we did our legs. So we're still we're still decreasing because we still need to bring the shoulders in. So we're still going to be decreasing. So your next decrease is going to be six single crochet decrease. And you're going to do that till you can't anymore. And then you're going to put, um, you're going to be left with five stitches. If you sewed on like I did. You should get all the way around except for five stitches. So you're just going to put one single crochet in each of the five stitches that you're left with. So we'll see. We'll see if it works out. And I'm going to do the same thing as far as the sew spots. I'm going to share the sew spots on one side, but not the other side. So six single crochet decrease. That's number one. So that's a sew spot. That's my fifth stitch. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna skip this and go over here. And that's six. And then my decrease. And I'll do the same on the other arm. Or even on the other side. I'm gonna use one shared sew spot but not the other. So this here is my decrease. Oh, that's hard to do. So I'm going to skip that stitch. I'm going to pop over here and continue. This is my decrease. So I didn't explain. My decrease was in my sew spot. So that's why I skipped over here. So I just did my decrease. I'm going to use the sew spot for my number one stitch. So I'm going to skip that sew spot and go over here to this next stitch for a two. And then my decrease. Sorry, I gotta hold this funny sometimes. It gets difficult to do it on camera. Just make sure you're not using your same stitch when you go. Oh, this is getting hard. So this is a shared um, sew spot for my fourth stitch so I'm going to skip that one and I'm going to pop over here what did I say? fourth stitch one, two, three, four that's five that what am I on? Six. That is six. Oh, and then my decrease. Oh, so I don't have extra stitches in this one. So I've done something different in this one than I did my my first one. That actually worked out that the sequence come all the way around. So good for me, I suppose. But I have no idea what my numbers are. <laughs> That's okay. Um, this next one, you're just going to do five single crochet decrease. I'm going to count this one. I can count it now, I suppose, just to let you know. So 
says 33. I counted 33, but that can't be right because 33 is an odd number. And I, I came right over to the edge. So um, I'm going to count this next one. It's a five single crochet decrease. So just do it till you can't do it anymore. And then just fill the rest with single crochets. I'm going to count this next round. Well, again, I did my sequence even, and now I have 30 stitches. So PDF users, you'll see that round 23, it says 36 stitches. So I've done something different, or my numbers were off on the PDF. But, you know, it's not a, it's not a perfect science. So um, your next round is going to be four single crochet decrease. PDF users, you'll notice that it says 30 stitches. You're obviously not going to have 30 stitches. Well, you may. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what you guys have for numbers. Mine are going to be different. And it happens when you sew stuff on. It always happens. So, I don't even match my own numbers when I sew stuff on. So, that's number one. That's four single crochets the hard way. And then my decrease. So I have 25 stitches. My original pattern, um, I stopped at 24. So for anybody right now that has 30 stitches, your next round is going to be three single crochet decrease. PDF users, that's round 25. This gives you 24 stitches. I have 25 stitches right now. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to count. Yeah. 25 stitches is what I have right now. So that's as far as I'm going. I'm not, I didn't want it to be, because she's a hippo, I didn't want her to to have a skinny neck. I want her to have a fat neck, because, I mean, she's a hippo. So I stopped at 24. Considering I have 25 stitches right now, I'm just going to do a decrease so my numbers match. But, um... If you don't have the same numbers as me, which you may not, because I didn't on my first one. My first one, I should have 30 stitches right now. So I did something different with the arms, obviously, that I didn't do with my first one. So that's why things are changed. Now when you stuff this, don't stuff in here because it'll make the arms come out and you don't want the arms to come out that that much. And I overstuffed my shoulders a bit. So try not to overstuff your shoulders either. You don't want her to be a <laughs> football player. Anyway, your next round. For anybody sitting at 30 stitches right now, is one uh, three single crochet decrease. So anybody that's with me currently, my last stitch is going to be a decrease, but I want to change back to my hippo color. So I'm going to do my decrease. But I'm not going to finish it with yellow. I'm going to finish it with gray. I just kind of have to hold everything together. Make sure your yellow's tight. So, again, I like to tie these two. Keeping my hook in there just so I know I'm not going too, too tight. 
and then I can cut off my yellow. I'll just tuck it down there. So we're going to start building the neck for the head. So your first two rows are going to be um, one single crochet in each stitch. You should have 24 stitches if you did round 25. I have 25 stitches, so my first stitch is going to be a decrease just to make the numbers the same so that I have 24 stitches. So. Yours, you don't have to. If you have 24 stitches, then you're good. One single crochet, 24 stitches for two rows, and I will see you on the other side. Okie dokie. This is everything that you should have right now. Oh, my guy's backwards. This is what you should have right now. This is the front. <laughs> so, this is the neck. Uh, which is why we changed back. Um, so, we're going to start with the head, which is why I had to do the decrease to get 24 stitches. Just so my numbers were not all wacky. Um... This round here is going to be two single crochets in each stitch because now we're starting the head and she's got a fairly big head. So um, we're going to end up going up to 48 stitches. And then after that, we're going to we're just going to do the one increase. And then after that, we're going to be on straight just rows of one single crochet. So we'll get to that later. So this round's going to get pretty squishy. Two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. So this is what you should have. For the next 10 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my 10 rows. This is what you should have. We're going to put eyes in. The no. eyes, so I, there's nowhere to really know where to center, but the second row from the top is where I put my eyes in. And I put them in uh, seven stitches, seven visible stitches in between. And these are great big 12 millimeter eyes. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think. I think that's good for me. I'm going to put my backs on. So I did blue, blue for my last eyes. I'm doing green for these ones. So and that is what I did. So she's getting pretty tall. So your next decrease round is going to be four single crochet decrease. And that should bring you down to 40 stitches. Get that out of the way. That's four single crochets and counting your markers number one. And I'm going to do invisible, so front loops only. It, for me, you don't need to do that. 
So four single crochet decrease should fit all the way around and I will see you on the other side. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 32 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets and a decrease. And repeat. So I'm going to start de um, decreasing. I'm going to start filling my head. Stuffing, not decreasing. I don't know why you said that. So just make sure you're getting enough into that neck area so you don't have a wobbly head. Oh, great big noggin on this guy, girl. So your next decrease round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 24 stitches. Two single crochets. I'm stuck. And a decrease. Your next decrease and your last decrease, it's not your last row, it's your last decrease. It'll be one single crochet and a decrease. So that's one single crochet and then your decrease. So this is what you should have. Um, we're gonna do one round of one single crochet in each stitch before we cinch it. So you'll have plenty of time to finish filling it. You should have 16 stitches. So I'm just gonna count to 16. That's my 16th stitch. I'm going to go into the next one and I'm going to fasten off. So I need a cinching tail. And you can finish filling it. So once you're satisfied, going to go in the front loop and out the front loop just like that and again in and out all the way around Even though she's going to have a hat on, if you choose to make the hat, you obviously don't need to make the hat, but we want her head to be nice and, and neat. So pull that closed and you're going to want to pop across to secure that. And I'm going to pop across in the other direction to secure it. Sorry, I can't keep holding it up. It hurts my arm. <laughs> so I just pulled across to secure it. Um, I haven't made a knot yet. I'm going to come across again. I'm going to make a knot. 
And that is it. Just weave back and forth in and out. So you can just move the stuffing around now a little bit and that's the top so it's going to have a hat on the top of it anyway. Um, I'm sorry that's my husband He's decided he needs to whippersnap in front of an open window while I'm filming. Fabulous. So we'll just give him a second. So, um, we're going to do the eyebrows, and I think that's going to be the end of chapter two. So his, his timing's a little off. So grab a little bit of black. This is what I did on my last one. Just eyelashes, actually. We're not doing eyebrows. I just chose to do eyelashes because they were they were just simple. Okay, now that the whippersnipper is gone. Good lord. So, I'm going to go. It doesn't matter where you go in. It just matters where you pop out. So, I'm going to pop out, like, literally at the eye. Right there. So don't pull this all the way. So wherever, depends on how long you want your lashes or where you want your lashes. Come back up the same hole. And again, we're going to go out wherever you want your lash to come out. We're going to come back up the same hole. <laughs> And your last lash we're not going to come back up the same hole but you need to come across to this eye and try to kind of get around the same spot that you started your lashes so there's my first bit of lashes off to the side a little bit so now we just have to make this side match so I want to be out this way Oh, I pulled way too hard on that. Getting them even is the hard part. So once you put your last one in, I'm going to put my last one in here. You can just shoot out wherever. I don't know. That's kind of close. <laughs> um, we can sew ears on and then that will be the end of the chapter. I will just kind of leave you with sewing the ears on. I'm not going to do the whole ears on camera. So we're going to end with sewing the ears on, so I will see you in chapter 3. Just remember, these are kind of have to be concaved a little bit. And then try to just kind of line them up with your eyes. That's all I do. Hi guys, welcome back to chapter 3. So in this chapter we're going to be doing obviously the muzzle, uh, the, the teeth, <clears throat> uh, the hat, and then 
building the dress and then we're done we're done this guy so for his muzzle still using our five millimeter we're gonna start with a chain nine We're going to do a one single crochet increase back up. So you're just going to do that three times. That's one time. That's two times. That's three times. You have two stitches left. Next one gets one single crochet. And then the next one is going to get four single crochets in the same space. So do you see how it kind of curves around? I want you to follow that curve. Tighten your slip knot. And now we're going to work on this side. So we've just followed this curve right around. So you should have a little curvy piece like this. And then you're going to do the same thing back down. So right next to your slip knot here, you're going to go into that stitch and you're going to do one single crochet. And then all the way back down, you're going to do one single crochet and an increase. Three times like before. I know it's awkward because it turns. stitch gets the two the increase so that's what you should have it's kind of wavy and it's kind of turny and your next round I just want you to put one single crochet in each of what should be 24 stitches so if you wanted to put um, a marker in here just make sure you're putting it on the right stitch so that stitch right there. You can put a marker, makes no difference. So one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So that's my 24 stitches. So it's still all turny and flippy. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 32 stitches. That's number one. Just make sure because that's an elongated stitch. So just make sure you pop over here. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat.
So you can kind of flip it around so it should be un flipped around like this. For the next three rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 32 stitches. And then you'll, you'll notice it really flip around. I will see you on the other side. So this is what you should have. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to do a two single crochet decrease. That's two single crochets and then a decrease. Now this is the only decrease we're doing so it doesn't matter which one you do. And repeat. So I should have 24 stitches again and I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches and then we're done. We're going to make nostrils before we sew this on though. We're going to make nostrils and sew them in place. So one single crochet each stitch, 24 of them. Alright, so this is what you should have. So it gets stuffed a little bit. You can fasten off with a sewing tail. So the nostrils, I just sewed to these two spots because, you know, I thought it was good. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in here though before I do that because I think it'd be easier to sew my nostrils in if I had some kind of girth in there. Anyway, your nostrils are quick and easy, but they're done with another hook because I didn't want it to be too, too, too big. So I used a four millimeter G hook. So make a slip knot. I need to put six single crochets in here and that's about it. That's your nostril. So you can fasten off, make another one. I'm not sure if you need more of a sewing tail or just a tying tail, tying these two together. So we'll make our other one. So 
So I'm going to take my straggler from my magic ring. I'm just going to go down this hole. You know, the spots where um, spots, you can see them. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm just tacking it down in spots. But I'm going to come up. I only tacked it down like four spots. I'm going to tie these together. That way nobody's ripping off my nostril. I'm not really going to put any more stuffing in it until after I sew it on because <clears throat> I uh, think it might just be easier. So I just put mine really close to the eyes and down. I mean, we're not putting a bottom jaw, so it doesn't really matter how far down, but you know, I can do that. So, we're putting teeth. That's about it. There we go. Now she looks way cuter. Way cuter. Looks funny from the side, but straight on. Not so bad. So let's do the two teeth. They're pretty quick. And yeah, I actually did stuff them, so... I used a three millimeter E hook for the teeth. What should be my pink guy? Oh, that's 3.5. Oh, I think it was 3.5 because that's an E. And you need some white. It's just a regular four weight, it's nothing special. So we're going to do a magic ring of eight single crochets.
For the next two rows, you're just going to put eight single crochets in each of these eight stitches. Or one single crochet in each of these eight stitches. So I'm just going to count to 16, and then I'm going to fasten off and make my other one. So that's it. I'm going to fasten off. So you need a sewing tail and um, a little bit of stuffing if you can fit it in there. Geez, I think for the most part your, um, your straggler will probably stuff it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I use stuffing. Oh, no I did not. I did not stuff my last ones. So I think this is just su such a small hook that it doesn't really it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't collapse. It's pretty stiff. So let's do it again. Magic ring, eight single crochets, and then two rounds of one single crochet in each stitch. So I have both my teeth done. I'm going to come over here with my straggler from my second tooth and I'm going to meet up with my other side. I'm going to tie these two together in a double knot. So I'm going to cut it off but I'm going to leave these nubbies and poke it down. And our teeth are done. So this is what we got so far. Mine are a little pokey. I'm just going to push them down. Straighten my schnoz. There, I made mine a little less bulky. All right, so um, let's work on the dress because the hat's the biggest part. So we'll work on the dress. So oh, whatever you're doing for the dress, get your materials and I'll meet you right back here. So I got my yellow. I'm going to make a slip knot. So I am going to reattach at the back. Do you see where this jog is? So right below your color jog are all these front loops that we left exposed when we used the back loops in this, this row. And then it drops down here and starts again because we work in a spiral. That's why it, the jog. So we got a jog in our front loops as well. So I want you to start at this front loop down here. Not the one above it, the one at the bottom. So, let me yarn around my doll. Reattach with whatever you want to reattach with, whether it's a slip knot or a single crochet, it does not matter. Because you're going to put a second stitch in there anyway. So, reattach and then put another single crochet in that same space. So we can use that for a stitch. So 
where I reattached, you can't see it because I just pulled this slip knot closed. So you can only see the stitch I just made. So make sure you put another stitch in that space. All you're going to do is one single crochet in each of these front loops. You should have 57. This was our 57 row. So the first rounds, easy peasy. Well, all of the rounds are going to be easy peasy. Um, it's more awkward than anything really. So I've got one more loop to do and you see how off set I am. I am actually going to come down on the diagonal and I'm going to totally ignore that loop. And I'm going to put in a single crochet. So at the end of the day it will look like that loop is right there. I didn't go into it. I used the post and I came down sideways. Well diagonal. So it makes it look a little evener, evener up there. Um, but this is why we started the back too. So uh, your next round is going to be one single crochet increase. If you want to slip stitch and chain one here, that's fine. I prefer to continue to work in a spiral. Um, so I'm not slip stitching or chaining. But this is my knot. This this here is my slip knot which I pulled tight so it doesn't look like there's a where I reattached this is the other stitch I put in that same space so that's what I go into and I'm gonna do one single crochet and an increase so this will bring you up to 84 stitches so that's my one single crochet and then my increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat It's awkward because it's on the side. And try to keep this loosey goosey. Try not to be tight. Because you kind of want this a little more flowy. So, this is what it should look like. Kind of wavy. Should have 84 stitches at this point. Your next round is going to be two single crochets. Oh, I'm stuck. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And this brings you up to 110 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And your increase of two single crochets in the same space. All right, now that we got this little frill going on, which is fabulous, by the way, we're going to start um, a two row repeat design for this dress so it's not so boring. Oh, it's pretty easy. So I want you to do two half double crochets in this first stitch. So after the first stitch though, that's where your marker goes. So two half doubles in the same space. And then I want you to skip one and put two half doubles in this next space. 
and that's your repeat all the way around. That's your first row repeat. This is a two row repeat. So skip one, two half doubles in the next stitch. I keep getting stuck on his nostrils and his teeth. <laughs> Skip one, two half doubles in the next stitch. So it's hard to kind of see the look that you're going to get right now, but keep going. So when you get back around, this is where my marker was, so I'm going to skip one, and where my marker was, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to slip stitch, and I'm going to chain one. The next round, which is the second row of your two row repeat, is just one single crochet in each stitch. So you're going to get the back side obviously showing, not the normal side. You're going to get the back side, which actually looks nicer. I'm going to show you why. So that's what the front side looks like where we did our two half doubles. But if you turn it around, where we did our two half doubles looks like a little bit of a star shape. Can you see that? So it actually looks better at the back. So that's the design that we're going to have is all these little stars on one row every other row. So that's why I chose that. But anyway, I'm going to put up my pause screen that will have just the two row repeat. And you can make this as long as you want. And I will see you on the other side. So when you come back around from your one single crochet row, you're going to slip stitch to the top of that chain one space, and you're going to chain two because your next round is going to be two half doubles in the same space, skip one, two half doubles in the same space. You're going to see it written on my pause screen uh, in brackets, and that's what that brackets means is same space. Remember, there's no chaining one. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to this. You can make it as long as you want. So that's my dress. That's as far as I went. Um, I don't know how many rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven all together plus my row of one single crochet that I attached with. So eight, eight rows. And she is super cute. Anyway, where to go? 
We tuck our ends away and then we'll get to making our hat and get this get this chicky finished. So you can go up this next stitch here and then go down this front loop here and pull and it should just look like a stitch just to make it look a little better and then I just kind of weave in and out of my stitches here and then I actually weave and yeah I know I'm doing this all underneath <laughs> Here we go. So I made the hat with holes for the ears. So I switched my marker color because <laughs> who's using yellow marker with yellow thread or yarn? So we're starting this hat off with a magic ring of six single crochets. All right, your next round is gonna be two single crochets in each stitch. We're still building in amigurumi. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, and this will bring it up to 18 stitches. That's one single crochet. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one, that's number two, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 30 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. And this is going to be our last increase round, so this will bring you up to 36 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your increase. So let's take care of this guy at the back before we continue. <clears throat> so I'm just going to make a knot. Just because I don't feel like weaving it in any more than once. Um, it's a tight, tight spot, so it's hard on my fingers. It's just easier to make a knot 
and then do my weaving. I just don't want, I don't want my hat to come undone at the top, so I'm just going to do that. For the next four rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. This is what you should have. This is my four rows. So when I made this hat, I had kind of like a flapper hat in mind when I made it. Flapper hat, sun hat, kind of a, a deal. So here I want you to do 20 single crochets. We'll start there and then I'll explain what I'm doing after. That's my 20 single crochets. So you should be right around. Um, so um, in the front loops only, so we're going to be working into these guys here. Those are the back loops down here. We're going to work into the front loops so we can put a brim on this hat. The reason I'm not doing it all the way around is it's going to be a flapper hat sun hat kind of a style. So I want you to do 16 half double crochets, half doubles, in the front loops only. So 16 of them takes you right back to your marker. So that's what it should look like. So our next round, so we're, we got to increase at the same time we do all this single half double business. So PDF users, you're going to notice these sequences are written in brackets with how many times I want you to do them. So that doesn't mean the same space in this instance. So round 11, you're going to do two single crochet increase six times. That's number one, that's number two, and then your increase. That's six times. And then I want you to do these two single crochets on top of these two single crochets. So two single crochets and now we've got our half double starting here. So again in the front loops of this half double I want you to do a two half double increase five times. So in the front loops only two half doubles 
and then increase of two half doubles in the same space in the same front loop And then this last stitch just gets a half double in the front loop. So this is what you should have. This is what it should look like. I change six from the half double. And I skipped four, one, two, three, four, and into the fifth stitch, I started counting again. So I did three single crochet increase four times. So that's number one, where I just reattached. That's three single crochets, and then my increase one time. four times. And then I'm going to do two single crochets. Then I'm going to chain six. I'm going to skip four. So it puts me right on top of this half double just like what I did over here. I started on the top of the half double so do a half double when you go into this stitch. Oh, I get twisted around. There. So reattach with a half double. And then you're going to do three half double increase five times. That counts as number one. one time. Five times. <clears throat> so obviously our marker spot doesn't matter anymore. So this is our ear holes, in case you're wondering. I need to move my marker because our next round starts with a half double in there. So you should have had the one space before your big space that you made. You should have had that space there. That's where our new marker spot's going to go. That's a half double. 
in this big space, I want you to put five single crochets in this space. So, because we put them in this space, you can spread these out. They don't need to be that close together. So, just spread them out so they look all right. And now we're going to do a five single crochet increase. So be sure to get into this first stitch. Wait. Yeah, I was in the right spot. That's five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. That's one time. Three times. Now I want you to do four single crochets. And now we're at our big space again. So inside the big space, I want you to put five single crochets. And then I want you to, so now we're, we're kind of in the half, the half double area. So starting with half doubles, we're going to do five half double increases four times. That's five half doubles and then your increase of two half doubles in the same space. That's four times. So this is what you should have. Now it's funny looking at this point. So our next round, all the way around, and you don't so much have to do it here, but we're gonna do extended stitches. Just because, as you can see, it's a funny shape. So we're gonna do extended stitches to kind of even this all out and make it look a lot better. So you should have 64 stitches. And that's all you're gonna do. This is your last round. So try to keep it loose, but an extended stitch is you go in, pull up a bit, pull through one, and then pull through the second one. So as you can see, it's just about as high as a half double. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go all the way around. So when you get here, try to keep them a little bit tighter because you don't want them to be that high. But doing this part, you want to kind of keep them as high as your half doubles. So anyway, you're going to do 64 of these all the way around. So I'm at 30 stitches. Do you see how it's kind of made it look like a round hat now because we are doing the extended? I'm at 30, so I still got a ways, but after this big space, I start my half double. So I'm going to make mine a little bit tighter just so it doesn't extend out and then turns into a funny shape again. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to fasten off. Oops. I'm going to weave this in. So go into this neck, this stitch over here. Skip this. That doesn't mean anything. Go into this stitch over here. And then come back. This is where you fastened off. Take that front loop and go down there. And then pull. So this should even it out and make it look like a stitch. And then you can weave. All right, <clears throat> so this is what your hat should look like. This is the front, this is the back. So we're gonna reattach at the back here. Make a slip knot, or at the underside, not the back. The underside of it. And make ties. You don't need to make these ties if you don't want ties. Then you don't have to make them. Um, <clears throat> I make them because kids like to undo and do things up. So it also might help, you know, kind of teach them how to tie. Find the middle-ish, wherever you think. I mean, you could do more toward the front or you can do more in the middle. That seems okay to me. Anyway, reattach. Just make sure you go into the same space on the other side. So, reattach. For mine, I chain 24 and it it makes its way around, plus you have enough room to make a bow, so. So that's my 24th one. So I'm just going to cut it off and I'm leaving some, I don't think my ties need to be that long, but they're going to be for now. <laughs> Get through my slip knot and make sure you attach in the same space ish that you did on the other side. And you're going to chain 24. So you just need to tuck away where you reattached your little piece here. I'm just going to head this way because I am putting a little bit of stuffing in mine and I'm sewing it to my head. So these ties are just for the kids to, to play with. So the biggest part is for the front and the shorter part is for the back. So with the ears in there, oh sorry, with the ears in there and the ties pulled down, you're not going to see where we attached. So I'm just going to make these ties here shorter because they don't need to be that long. So you have the option of um, stuffing it, not stuffing it. So just pop the ears through the hole. Oh, sorry, it's hard doing camera. 
So I stuffed mine because it kind of collapses a little bit. So I want stuffing in mine. It's a certain look this hat is supposed to have. Sorry, I'm just adjusting. It's hard to do on camera because i got to lean forward to do it. So, I didn't put much stuffing in my hat. I just put a little tiny bit. But this hat is supposed to have an appearance. First, I'm going to do it up just to hold it in place. around her head and then I'm just going to get an extra piece to sew with. So if you're sewing it on like I am, make a slip knot on one end and then the other end gets put through your needle. So I sewed right in there because this, it, it helps to make it look like a flapper hat style, but adjust how you want it here. We're going to reattach at the back. It's always better to reattach at the back. I'm going to go up. So I'm going to go through my little loop and I'm going to tie that in a knot. So when I pull, when I tuck all this away, that knot's not going to be visible. And then I'm going to sew, actually I want a little more stuffing in my head I think. And then I'm going to sew just around this part. It's going to be hard to sew on camera, so I apologize. But just make sure you're sewing around the correct part of it. And then we'll put a ribbon around that particular part. So I've come back around to where I started. And I'm going to tie these in a knot, double knot. And this way I really don't need to weave all that far. So one is going to, I'm going to come down and pop out with one and then the other one I'm going to go up with it. That's something I always do. Go up and go down. I'm going to pull that out a bit though. because So. That's the hat. And then I did a bow. So I got all this ribbon. You can buy this at the dollar store actually. Just rows and rows. I think I'm going to just 
use the yellow from it. It doesn't quite match, which is good because then you'll see it, right? So I didn't measure what I needed. I just cut some. And then I ended up wrapping mine around twice. So I wrapped it around and I made a bow. So wrap it around. Mine's a lot thicker than I need it to be, but wrap it around make a bunny tail bunny tail yeah mine's a lot shorter I'm probably not going to get around a second time so make two bunny ears not tail make two bunny ears and then tie those I made mine way too short. And that's how you make a bow. Is by using the bunny bunny ear thing. So I'm just going to have a bow. <laughs> I'm not going to have anything dripping down the back like my other one, so which is no big deal. So my other one I had long enough that I could tie it a bow in the front and then bring it back around and still have pieces but this one this one's going to be different because I just managed to make it around tie a little bow and I mean you can off center this bow move it over to the side too I think that would that's absolutely cute now it really does look like a flapper hat from the dirty 30s so anyway that's my gal that's my hippo the bow's optional obviously so all done. Isn't she pretty? I'll show you everything. You can see your own, but... And the ears turned out absolutely perfect because the ears are pushed off, leaned up against the, the side, concaved a little bit. And she got her flapper hat on. It When you lay her down, it does <laughs> look funny. Anyway. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.